My name is Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net and you're watching Wes Montgomery Untold. The great jazz guitarist Wes Montgomery requires no introduction. He single-handedly forged a jazz guitar sound that is still imitated and revered to this day. Jazz guitarists and musicians have lots to learn from him and I wouldn't be surprised if his influence continues over several gen generations of artists in the future. So in short, Wes is probably the greatest jazz guitarist of all times. What I want to do with this new Untold series uh, on jazz greats is in fact try to understand the process behind the success. So along the way I'll synthesize musical and non-musical lessons for you, the watcher. So for the first video in the series, I'd like to address why Wes Montgomery rose to fame the way that he did in the 60s, all the while avoiding the deep bio, bio details, you know, the, the life and the music of Wes. I mean, sure, we can talk about Wes and his life and his recordings and his concerts in a typical bio way, but I'm more interested in what made him so great and especially what we can learn from him today. So let's dive in. Number one, grit. So by definition, grit is perseverance and passion for long-term goals. And this is the very first lesson we can learn from Wes. There's no doubt that our man was committed and ready to give it all when it came to music. Wes had this no matter what and whatever it takes kind of attitude throughout his life. So the greatest example of Wes Montgomery's amazing grit is a down period when Wes came back home after touring with Lionel Hampton in, the in 1950, January 1950 to be precise. He had a succession of day jobs after that to support his growing family. So he worked as a welder, as a, in a foundry, as a milkman you know, in Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. And I'm wondering now how many up and coming unknown jazz musicians would be ready to sacrifice almost a decade working day jobs before getting a big break on the international scene. Uh, hey, maybe you're that guy, that gal watching right now, I don't know. So anyways, Wes worked real jobs by day and played clubs at night from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. Then he headed over, headed over to an after hours called the missile, uh, missile Room, right? And he usually played trio music there. So luckily for us, it's by hanging out at the Missile Room that Wes was discovered by Nat and Cannonball Adderley, so to speak. Of course, Montgomery had already developed a reputation, it was showing up, and as Woody Allen puts it, 90% of success is showing up. So around 1959, after years of day jobs supporting his family, Wes signed to Riverside with Oren Keepnews, the producer, as a middleman. So the rest is history, uh, history of course, including the 1960 downbeat Star, Star Award for the incredible jazz guitar of Wes Montgomery, his most famous album, I think. So think about that for the next, uh, next time you hear a Wes solo, or when you're thinking that you don't have enough time to practice. Uh, perseverance is a required trait to become a high-level musician. Number two, we have Wes's perfectionism. Wes was constantly working on his own playing even after becoming an international level jazz star. So his perspective on music was rather unassuming. Even if his music was very forward-thinking and had and still has a huge impact on the music scene, Wes was to a certain point naive and he still believed that he was working as a working musician and that his job was to please the audience and bring back the bacon, you know, support his family and his work with this work. So this is so surprising, right? There's no ego at all in Wes's attitude towards life and music. Couple that with a constant will to get better and a sweet, warm personality, this unassuming mindset forged a character that became and remained perfectionist, a very perfectionist about music. For Wes, just good was never good enough, of course. Even in the studio, he insisted on re-recording and getting new takes so he could do a better job on his solo. There's an anecdote uh, of a producer, I don't remember who, uh, taking notes during the recording session, mentioning that Wes does not like his solo, wants to do another take, but everybody else in the band likes his solos, right? So. 
How do you see perfectionism applying to your situation? As musicians, uh, as a musician yourself, or as a colleague, as a friend, or as parents, you, you know, we know when we're cutting corners and when we have opportunities to get to, to go the extra mile with people. So make an effort to spot these opportunities and they'll awaken your inner perfectionist, I, I guess. So in third position, kindness. Just in passing, I want to mention that Wes was a soft-spoken, warm, and gentle man. He looks like a kind person, and I wouldn't be surprised that uh, hearing that that was his natural state, right? His interviews, performances, and live clinics, workshops, you see his inner character shine brilliantly. And watch him on YouTube. Even when he's playing his best bebop solos, he's smiling all over the place. So what's the lesson here? Really, kindness is a gift to humanity and to ourselves to some extent. I personally believe that, you know, what goes around comes around, so I aim to treat everybody like a friend. At first, at least. <laughs> you know, you see, I'm not the guy giving bad vibes to beginners at jam sessions. Uh, but speaking about Wes, all in all, I think that being kind is something we can all learn to do better in life. The fourth thing I want to mention about Wes Montgomery is his musical family. So he was raised in a very musical family and before playing guitar, he played some sort of a four-string tenor guitar with his two, his two brothers, uh, Monk and Buddy. And in fact, the instrument was a gift from one of his brothers. Uh, the three of them recorded together, they played, they toured, and that's before Wes's international success. So the le lesson we can try to incorporate into our own lives, here's the following. We have to surround ourselves with musicians, and even if there's, there's not a musical family surrounding you, the musicians you play with will become family. It's important to have close relationships with the people we're playing music with. In fact, I believe it's invaluable for musical growth. So to give you an example, I was not personally raised in a musical family. I'm the only musician out of five children. So I surrounded myself early on. All my friends were musicians in high school. I stayed after school to ask questions to the music teachers. They found me annoying and so on, right? And believe it or not, I was the weakest musician in the bunch at school. And I also want to point out that I still hang out with the high school teacher that helped me the most during that period. And now we're friends, you know, beyond music. So to conclude, hanging around other musicians transformed my life and allowed me to learn music on a whole new level. If you're not hailing from a musical family or have you don't have an artistic background, I suspect that spending time with other musicians will help you improve your act, basically. Another aspect of Wes I want to discuss is the exploration and research. So Wes clearly had no fear of using alternative ways to do things on his instrument. So people kept telling him, Wes, man, you can't play in octaves. This is meant to be played on the piano, but he pressed on, always tried. And couple that with his unique plucking with the thumb sound, and you get the most identifiable sound in the history of jazz guitar. So Montgomery's explorations and discoveries, that's playing with the thumb in, in octaves, gave birth to his unit voice. Would you imagine if Wes had stuck with what was acceptable and current for his time? You wouldn't be watching this video right now. So in short, this is one of the greatest non-musical lessons we can draw from Wes Montgomery. Every voice in jazz is unique, and we should always strive to find, find ours. So never mind, the, never mind the conventions and the right way to do things. You can even ditch all the lessons you find on jazzguitarlessons.net if you think you know better. That's totally fine. When you have a hunch or something, you have an idea or a concept in your mind or a technique or a chord or a lick, follow your heart and trust yourself. I believe it's the only way you'll get in touch with your, your inner musical voice, as Wes did, right? And perhaps with time you'll do like Wes and develop a recognizable and unique sound to contribute to the rich tradition of jazz. Uh, just as a side note, I'm not pretending I discovered my own musical voice, I'm not, you know, I'm not preaching that, I certainly didn't contribute musically to the tradition of jazz, not yet at least, right? So that's it for Wes Montgomery All Untold. I'm Mark from jazzguitarlessons.net. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to get the updates, the new episodes and the free lessons. I'll see you soon. Take care.